Ask its explanations. Part 4. Introduction. Contact Reports Volume 1. Plejadisch Plejarische Kontaktberichte. Gespräche. Block 1. Page Number S. 338 to 341. Date slash time of contact. Several. Translator S. Dyson Divine in Vivian Leg. Date of original translation. July 2009. Corrections and improvements made. N slash A. Contact person. Ask it. Chichi. And Billy. Synopsis. Billy describes the experience of traveling through time and how his companion Jitchi became irrational and developed fanatical tendencies against the Christian religion through his experience of time travel discoveries of our true past, even though he was previously a devout Christian before the journey. Ask it also provides insight into the origins of the Great Pyramids and how they were used to save mankind from extinction during the Great Deluge in 9545 BC which was foreseen by the seer Sorid, son of King Saluk, 300 years prior. Ask it also tells how the horse originated from North America, not Europe and that North America was colonized by humans from other worlds many times, and many times they annihilated one another often with nuclear weapons. Examples of destroyed cities can apparently be found in Death Valley and their Valley of Fire. Translator's Notes An important message for the reader of this document, Ein Wichtige Nachricht und in Leser dieser Schrift. We, Dyson Devine and Vivienne Leg of GaiaGuys.net have been given permission by Billy Mayer, Figure.org, to make these unofficial preliminary translations of figure material. Please be advised that our translations may contain errors. Explanation Explanation from September 11, 1964, Marali, India. Written down with Ascot's memory assistance. The required procedure, leading up to the time travel transmission, took about 10 minutes, whereby, however, the actual jump, required to go from one epoch to another only lasted a split second. All that which appertained to the technology and the procedure was not explained by Askit. With the launching of the transmission a quite weird thing happened in the form that the entire surroundings of the ship slowly shimmered and then quite suddenly simply no longer existed. I also observed the same process in regard to myself, and in the moment of their jump, it was, to me, actually as if I suddenly no longer corporally existed. Somehow I felt transferred into something which I sensed as being eternity itself and in which an indescribable silence and endless, calming peace and enormous love ruled. The actual procedure, from a technical viewpoint, remained a puzzle to me, and certainly I'll also never be able to solve this because I am unfortunately completely ignorant in regard to technology. But nevertheless I gained extraordinarily valuable insights into things which mean a very great deal to me. It was often for me as if I were raised up by being itself. Ask it took Chichi and me, during the following six days, into various epochs, part of the time very far back in the past, and part of the time into the future. I thereby saw and experienced things that are never compatible with the assertions of the archaeologists and the scientists from other fields. I had to recognize that many developed scientific theses of our time are indeed merely pure theses and completely lack any truth, especially regarding many events and occurrences in the past. But I also recognized that many events in natural science, and so forth, follow a completely different course than that which is asserted and described by our scientists. On these trips, I often believed that I was dreaming because everything appeared to me to be quite mad and fantastic. Alone the transmissions into other epochs seemed unbelievable to me, even after I already had several time travels behind me. Many times I saw that I was forced to test reality. However I always found that I was subject to neither some sort of hallucinations nor other kinds of deceptions. I produced lasting, painful proof on myself which would bring it home to me for the whole rest of my life that I was not subject to any dreams or deceptions. Indeed, it also went no better for Jitchi in this regard. Only he seemed to not very easily digest everything, because often I caught him cursing while furiously scratching out entire chapters of his Bible with a red pen. 
having found reality completely different from the way it was described in the Bible must have made a great deal of work for him. From time to time I heard him talking to himself and issuing threats against those who, still preach such nonsense today. I slowly developed serious concerns that he could become an anti-religious fanatic and that, after the final return into our normal time, he would go quite mad. But the remainder gave him the truth about the life and work of Jmanuel when asked it led us back to the year 32 in order to, there and then, examine those events which are described so wrongly and counter to reality in the New Testament of the Christian Bible. Chichi went quite mad and and ran amok, and he began to hate religion like the plague. He, who indeed had been a good believing Christian up to that point and had believed in the role of Christ as divine saviour. Unfortunately, the various time travels may not be reported upon more closely because they contain values which are too deep, about which one must remain silent. But ask its permission extends to the point where a quite particular event, which is of more important significance, may, or must, be reported. It deals with the events concerning Jmanuel, which, during two thousand years, were so malevolently falsified that a mass psychosis arose from it, as did a further religion, Islam as well as many sects which were able to be constructed from it. However I do not want to jump ahead with the events, rather I will precisely remain with Askit's memory assistance and only report exactly that which she allows me to, through her esteemed help. So the first partial excerpts from her explanations, which she gave permission to have written down, follow. In this way the chronological sequence, which I am not entitled to alter, is also maintained. Askit's Explanations Partial excerpt from Eskett's explanations from February 9, 1953, during a second visit in the Cheops Pyramid of Giza in Egypt. You wonder about the age of the pyramid. In truth its history is somewhat confused, because its origins lead back to very early times. Were I to tell them to you now, their meaning and the history of its origin would lead much too far. So I will only tell you the required data according to which you can form a picture for yourself. This, and also a few other pyramids on the earth, was constructed when the constellation of Lyra, Lyre, explanation of September 4, 1975, was positioned in the sign of cancer. That results in a time span of 2x36,650 years and therefore 73,300 years in total. You must calculate 2x36,650 years back from the time of the Hec era in order for you to obtain the correct figure. Until shortly before the Great Deluge, about 9545 BC, the pyramids here in this land remained abandoned to their fate and nobody bothered any more about them. But they acquired a significance again 300 years before the Deluge, even if not in their original sense, which unfortunately, for many kinds of reasons, may not be named. But it still has to be explained that the erroneous assumptions, of all of the Earth scientists, about the time of the Arc Deluge are just as very wrong, by umpteen thousands of years, as are the erroneous calculations, to which they have succumbed, about the times of various kings and emperors who lived thousands of years ago. The actual time, which was handed down to you Earthlings, of the Deluge of the Ark is also greatly falsified, because it occurred nearly 100,000 years ago and therefore must be calculated to be very much earlier than the lifetime of King Salak who had taken over an important role in regard to the pyramids. King Salak lived about 300 years before the Great Deluge. He had a son named Sorid, who in large measure had the ability to see into the future. In this way, in a dream, he saw a great comet which pulled along seven smaller comets behind it which collided with the earth with terrible roaring sounds, whereby darkness came upon the world. Sorid saw countless humans die because of that, because they were killed by the seven impacting comets. The few survivors did not know where they could save themselves in order to escape a hail of projectiles from outer space, which accompanied the catastrophe, as well as the resulting stinking and hot bodies of water. Sword reported his bad dream to his father who summoned all the astrologers and scientists in the land. By means of difficult work and written records they found out that, in the course of 300 years, a gigantic comet would fall to Earth, throwing it out of its orbit and turning it in its course. 
in order to keep from having the survival of terrestrial humanity put into question by this expected catastrophe. King Solar ordered that the already existing pyramids be prepared as protection stations and survival stations for the humans of the still distant future. He also directed that underground villages and stores of goods be established and non-perishable food be stowed in the pyramids and underground villages. His descendants, as well as the later rulers of the land, also were faithful to these directions. Over the following 300 years the pyramids were maintained and also their outer sides were covered with very thick layers of lime in order to keep the water out. In the writing of that time they also fabricated signs in the layer of lime which told of the coming events so that they would not be forgotten by anybody. When the gigantic comet actually came, which penetrated this universe and the solar system from another space-time configuration, and is still today named the destroyer by many life forms. The humans made their way to the pyramids and underground villages and shut themselves into them. The comet turned the earth, flooded it with all the bodies of water and destroyed and annihilated everything which was at its mercy. Only a few masses of humans and animals of all kinds survived without the constructions for their protection and once again earth humanity had to find a new start after this catastrophe, as had already repeatedly been the case in earlier times. Originally the pyramids and their construction lead back to the sons of heaven, those who travel among the stars, those who were actually the original settlers of this world. Ask its partial explanation from February 11, 1953. You wonder very much about things which I say to you. Your assumption is not correct because the horse was not brought to America from Europe. Precisely the opposite is the case. All horses of this world stem from the continent which you call America. This continent was also inhabited by humans of extraterrestrial origin, from spacefarers and their descendants, around 2,500,000 years ago, by your time reckoning. But, as usual on this world, they got in each other's hair and annihilated themselves. They invented atom bombs and exploded them in a blitzkrieg. Their effect was exceptionally great and they depopulated a large part of the continent whereby also various types of animals, as, for example, also very early types similar to horses, became completely extinct. To my knowledge you call one species of this animal of that time Hipparion, which, however, was not a direct ancestor of the actual horse. Even today, after many, many millennia. You still name many regions of this continent the same as they were named in much earlier times. These designations were handed down up to the current time, if also often in strongly altered form. But they still exist as testimony to that unreasonable and barbaric time. Those who wish to see hard evidence can find it at any time and view it and think about it. There are sites of former sites which stood there many many thousands of years ago and have been melted by atomic hells into glass-like masses. The best preserved testimonies have become curiosities in your time because the earth human does not know their denesis. But very well known in this regard are names like Death Valley, which, however, also still has a relationship to other events in the present day. The Valley of Fire near the city of Las Vegas is another witness to the past and the timeless atomic insanity of humans who populated the earth again and again.